Hey guys, uh, in this video, I'm going to continue building the API project that I had introduced. So the first thing is going to be to create a folder where I'm going to start my project. So I'm going to open up a folder and I'm going to open it up my desktop. So I'm going to call this this folder. I'm going to call it book. API and select a folder. So this folder is going to open up in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to set up a project. So I'm going to call a terminal. I'm using Git Bash. So I'm going to call Python uh, minus m then them and env. This should be enough to create our virtual environment. Now our virtual environment has been created. The next thing we're going to do is to install the requirements that we need. So I'm going to install Flask. Then say pip install Flask and Flask rest x. So I'm going to activate my virtual environment first. What I need to do is to say source env script and activate. Now my virtual environment has been activated. So the first thing I'm going to do is to install the requirements by saying pip install flask flask first x. Now, since my, my dependencies have been installed, I'm going to freeze them in the requirements.txt file. So, we say pip and freeze requirements.txt. Now, I forgot that, so let me freeze them to that file. And when we check this file, we have all these requirements being written to that file. Now the next thing we're going to do is to create the file we're going to write our code in. So I'm going to call this app.py. So the first thing is to create a Flask instance, which is going to be the, like the main point, entry point of our application. So I'm going to say from on Flask import Flask. Now the next thing is I'm going to be able to create an instance of, of the API with Flask REST X. So I'm going to import something from Flask REST X. So I'm going to import from, from Flask REST X. I'm going to import API and resource. So Flask REST X helps us to create an API using the best practices. And it makes the whole process simple and you write less code. So let us start. We're going to create an app instance. So I'm going to say app is equal to Flask. Then the import name. Now I'm also going to create an API instance. So I'm going to say uh, API instance is going to be API. And then I pass it with app. So this will make Flask Rest X work with our app. And the next thing I'm going to do is to create routes. So I'm going to say, since we have having books, we can be able to access individual books and can be able to access collections of books. So I'm going to say API dot route. So this is going to be our first route, which is going to go to books. And I'm going to also create another route, which is API dot route. This is going to go to an individual book with its ID as an integer. So this is going to be ID. Which is an integer. 
So after doing this, we can be able to create the various resource classes. Now, how class race X works is we create a route, and then you create a class that has a specific resource that you want to access or do an HTTP verb on. For example, we can access a group of resources. I can say class books. Then I can say books here is from my source. And now I specify the different get method, the different methods I may need. For example, def get and then this will be self and I can say pass and I can also post to the same route so I can say post and self and then I pass and now when I go to this I can create also a resource class which is class book so I can call this book resource and to inherit it from resource so now when I create I can say def get so in this case I'm getting a book it's id so I'll say self and then id and then I'll pass and if I go I can also create the same route by saying put under the same route so I can be able to update a book so I can say update a book and then I can also be able to delete a book so I can say def delete and this will also take itself and the id of the book we want to delete and then you say pass so by just having this we shall put all our code for for getting under this function for posting under this function for getting one book for updating one book for deleting one book and it will all be under this code base now all we need is a model and we shall be able to serialize that model. However, let's first experiment returning a response, dummy response. So I'm going to use the json function that comes with Flask to return a JSON response. So I'm going to go to Flask and I say import json Now When I import json I'm going to come, instead of asking this, I'm going to return json message of message of hello hello world so if i save all i need to do is to run the server so i'm going to say um, if underscore underscore name is equal to underscore underscore name all I need to say is app dot run start my server. We need to specify debug equals to true because I want the server to be reloading as I'm coding. So I'm going to save this and then come to the terminal and say Python app dot pi. So the server is going to run at port 5000. I'm going to go to Insomnia and I'll have to create other requests. So I'm going to remove these requests. I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete all these requests, and so that we have an empty space where we can see this getting to work. So I'm going to create a new request. Um, request. Uh, so this is going to be a request for getting. Because the route you're going through is for getting all books. This is going to be a get request, so I'm going to create it. Now I need to go to localhost. Localhost 5000 slash books. And when I send this, I'm going to get a response of hello world. However, in this case, what we want to return is a collection of books based on a particular database model. So we're going to use Flask SQL Alchemy to create that model. Now the next thing is going to be installed in Flask SQL Alchemy. Now I'm going to install Flask SQL Alchemy by saying pip install Flask SQL Alchemy. Now what Flask SQL Alchemy is going to do is going to help us to model our database in terms of 
objects. We create a class that represents a table in our database, and every row in that database is signified by an object that we create of that class. So let's go ahead and do it. So after installing, I'm going to pip. It's keep track of our requirements. So you can say to freeze requirements or txt. So that adds Flask SQL out to me to our requirements or txt. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to import SQL out to me and set it up so it has to work with it in our application. So we need to save from Flask SQL out to me. We're going to import SQL out to me. Now the next thing to do is to create our DB instance. So I'm going to go and say DB is going to be equal to SQL Alchemy. So this is our SQL Alchemy instance. And if you want SQL Alchemy to work with our app, you have to specify the app. So I'm going to say app. And this is able to register our app. So if I run Python app.py, now we shall see the following warnings. We're going to see a warning such as neither SQL database URI nor SQL bind is set, defaulting that to memory. So what you need is to set up the database connection string for SQL Alchemy. Now I'm going to copy this setting and bring it just right here. So I'm going to add that setting by saying up dot config and this is going to be SQL Alchemy database URI. Now what we need is where to keep it. So I'm going to import OS and after importing OS I'm going to create a variable called base star that is simply going to point to our current directory. So we need to say OS dot path dot dot that name because all we need is that name of the folder in which we are then we need to specify the, the the path the exact path to where our file is so we need to say path dot then the real path is going to be the real path for our file so we need to say the real path to the current file we are working in and this gives us our our current folder. So if you want to see the that path, we can say print base dar. So if I run, I have an error here. So we need first commit this and save and then start my server again. So as you see, we can be able to see that our folder is C Jonathan desktop and then book API. So I need to stop my server a little bit. So we need to uncomment this and then create a database connection string. Now I'm going to say we're going to use SQL Lite for our database. So I'm going to say SQL Lite and then say then specify that what we need is to join to join the best DAR because the SQL file is going to be a file. So what we need to do is to join the PSDAR, join that directory to the file we want to create as a database. So in this case, I'm going to say books.d. Now if I save, I'm going to create another config variable that's going to be for track modifications. As you see here, setting it to true or false to suppress this one. So if we want to suppress this one, I'm just going to copy this and Come and write a configuration variable for it. So I mean, say SQL chemistry track modifications equals to. We don't want to see those warnings. We need to say false. Now when I serve, if I run my server again, uh, the errors are gone. So let's see. We still bring the track modifications error. So see where the mistake is. Correct it and save. Now the errors are gone. Now we don't need to print this, so what I'm going to do is to also remove it. 
another same thing I'm going to say that is specific to SQL Alchemy is apt config and this is going to be SQL Alchemy echo and this is going to be equal to to true now um, there are very many settings that are specific to SQL Alchemy and if you want me to make a video about them please comment down in the section below so I'm going to set SQL Alchemy echo to true and what this is going to do is to enable us to be able to see the different database SQL queries and the different database SQL transactions that occur so what I'm going to do is to now create the model for this app to work so I'm going to come and create a class and this class is going to be called so this class is going to inherit from DB dot model. So this is going to be our database model. Now every book should have an ID and this ID has to be a unique identifier. So it's I say db dot column db dot integer and then this is going to be primary key equals to to true. Now, next thing the book is going to have is a title. So, a title is going to be db. So, specify it's going to be a string. This string is going to be your 25 characters. I say that it's not now by saying one but is equal to false. And then you can say that the author of this book can be db. DB dot string. So you can say that the author's name if you want it should be 40 characters and then you say none is equal to false. You can even increase the number of characters for the title. Let's say that the longest title can be 80 characters. Now um, you can also say that you keep track of the date you added this book. So you can say date added is equal to db dot db.com and so we can say db.com and this will be db.date date time we need to keep a default date time so we need to say default is equal to I'm going to do this using the date time module the date time package that comes with, with Python so I'm going to say import date time so I'm going to come and say the default time is going to be that time dot utc dot utc utc now so let's save when our server is running we see the time has no attribute utc now so let's go and see this so it's actually from that from that time import that the time and save so I'm going to run my server again and we have no errors so we've tried to fix that error now um, I'm also going to create a function under that so it's going to be def we pre self and so what this is going to do is to simply return um, going to return the title of the specific books that you have in the database if I save have my database model already created now from, for, from, for easy for easy creation of this model I'm also going to create something called a shell context processor and what this does is to expose our models in the terminal this can be helpful in development as it helps you to easily create your database. So I'm going to say at app dot shell context processor and you create a function say make make shell make shell context. Now what this does is to return. So what we're going to do is to return our database. So we're going to return our database as DB. So we need to return our database as db, our db, in this instance as db. Then we also going to return our 
So I'm going to return the book as book. So if I save, I'm going to control C and then I can since I'm in a batch terminal, I can use export export flask app as okay. So what this does is to create the flash command with the app file that we have. So I can type things like Flask shell, and I get access to the Flask shell, which is a Python shell. Now, once I have this, I can be able to to access those by saying DB, and that brings the DB instance. If I be able to stay on the book, be able to see the book instance. Now, all I can do is to just say DB dot create. And since we saw that we said SQL alchemy equal to true, we can be able to see that SQL generates the database we have. So right now we are having our books database created. Now since that has been successful, we can try to add some dummy data to this database of ours. We can say new book is equal to um, let's say a book with a title with Django for beginners, and then all we can do is um, to say um, the we can say the author of this book is going to be equal to um, <coughs> author of this book is W S S. So this is going to be W S V C. Okay, so so let's add. This so I'm going to say oh we have a syntax error. So I'm going to say new book is going to be equal to so the book is going to be with a title of jungle jungle for beginners and I say comma so the author of this book is going to be equal to W S Vincent. So this is going to be. I'm having another error, which is a syntax error. Okay, so let's try to figure this out. So I'm going to say new book is going to be equal to a book, and then we have a book with a title. So this is going to be a title of um, Django. Beginners and the author is going to be equal to and W S Vincent. Now, if we say we want to add another book, so I'm going to create a new book, it's going to be equal to book. So, a book with a title of um. Let's say um learn, learn Java and let's say the author is going to be equal to Jonathan. So if we add this, we can be able to save this to the database by saying the video session. But, um, so we can add new book. We can also add new book to then we can say db session dot commit. So now these books have been added to the database and we are also able to see the SQL that is run to add them to the database. <coughs> now the next thing we need to do is to query to see whether this exists in our database. So I'm going to run a query by saying books is equal to book dot query dot all. So this is going to select all books. So if I say books, it should return a list of books. So I have Java for beginners and learn Java. Now if I need to get one book, I may say is equal to book 
dot query dot get so I'm going to get a book with ID of book. So if you say book one, so I get Django for beginners. And we've been successful. And the next thing we need to do is to create a serializer for these books. So I'm going to get out of the shell by pressing Ctrl Z. And I'm going to go to my code and I'm going to import fields from flash text so that we create a serializer. So what a serializer does is to get these objects and then transfer them to JSON as well as to get JSON and transfer them into the objects. So let's try to do this. So I need to come just right here before after the model and then create a field. So I'm going to say I'm going to call this book model. So this is going to be a book model and it's going to be API dot model. So API dot model is a function that helps us to create this serializer. It's like you see you just a model. So now we're going to register a model for books. First thing we need to do is to give it a name. So we're going to just call it name. And then the next thing is to specify the fields or the model. So I'm going to write a model. And the first thing is to specify that the ID is going to be fields dot integer. Now we also have um, the title, so the title is going to be fields dot fields dot string, and we also need to specify the author. So the author is also a string, so I'm going to say fields dot dot string, and um, I'm also going to say um, that join. So Join is a date time, so I'm going to say that join is going to be fields dot fields dot string. So um, after creating this model of ours, we're going to go down this side and we shall be able to use it while returning responses. Now let's see that in action. So in order for us to return a list of books, what we're going to do is to first match our response with the API model we created. So I'm going to say at API dot marshal with so we can choose to marshal a list or to marshal with to marshal a list or to marshal a list with so marshal this with returns a list of the object you want to marshal or to serialize and marshal with returns just one object. So we're going to use marshal this with since we want to return a list of objects. Now I want to specify that we want to use the book model as our fields and we also want to specify that all of that happened we want to specify that the code is going to be 200. Now if the code is 200 um, what we can do is to also specify the envelope in which our response will be. So we need to specify it as books. Now if I come, I have to create my box object, so I'm going to say box is going to be equal to book dot query dot and I don't think we need this, so I'm going to remove it and return box. So if I save and run my server again with the Python apply. I have main field which is undefined, so I have a mistake somewhere which is here. So I'm going to say fields and we run my server again. So we have a server running up. So when we go to get in books, we're having an error. So the error is like books is not defined. So let's see where that went wrong. The mistake is here. So when we say our server is going to refresh and write books, we are able to see that we get a list of the books we want. So that's working. Now the next thing will be to get an individual book. So what we're going to do in this case is go to this. Now I'm going to create a book, and that is going to be put book dot get 
We want to throw a 404 in case we don't find a box. So we're going to say 404 ID. So what we want to return is the book. Now we also want to use a serializer. So we're going to say at API dot marshal with because what we want to marshal with is the user book. So I mean the book model. So sorry for that. So we're going to get the book model. And then what we need to specify the status code. So the status code is going to be 200 and then the other group. So it's going to be your two then. Um, <coughs> within book. So let's try running this. So if I go and access, so I'm going to create a new request. I'm using Insomnia. So I'm going to create a new request. So I'm going to say get my book and say it's going to be a get request, so I need to write HTTP localhost 5000 and slash book slash one. So if I send this, I have not found, so let's see what's wrong. In this case, it's slash book slash one. So if I save, now it's already starting. So if I send this, we have a server error book has a book there, so let's see. It's actually the book dot query dot get four zero four. So let's try running that again. And we have our object being returned, our single book with an ID of one. So if we want to return the one with ID of two, we can say and it's returned. So line job. But the next thing is to create a route that creates a new book. So what we're going to do is to pan this right here. So, 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 so we shall also serialize our response. So we're going to say at API dot at API dot marshal with. So we're going to use the book model. The book model. So we want to return a status code of 201 and create a and we want to say that our envelope is going to be book. So now, um, when creating a new book, what happens is we get data from the server, which is in form of JSON, from the client, which is in form of JSON. So to get that data, we will need to have access to the request object in Flask. So Flask has that request object. Now we're going to import it by saying from Flask import request. When you get a request object, we're going to specify that the data we need, in this case, is going to be the data from that request object. Now we're going to say data is going to be equal to request. But since we need that data in form of JSON, we're going to call the get JSON or get JSON function. Now, after us creating this function, we'll have all our data that we need within this data object. So, to access our title for the book that we want to create, we'll say a request. We'll actually say that is equal to data.get. Then we specify that we need a title. Now, the next thing we shall need is the author of the book. We shall say that the data. Get so this will be the author of the book. Now, for us to create a new book, we we'll say new. new book is equal to book. So the first thing is going to be title, which is equal to the title and the author, which is going to be the author of the book. Now, to save this book, we're going to add it to the session by saying db.session.add. Let me add the notebook. And to save this, we're going to say db.session.commit. So, we want to return the book that we created. So, we're just going to return, we're going to return the new book. So since we have our serializer, what our serializer is going to do, instead of return the object, because this object cannot be serialized, it's going to return a serialized object. So let's save it. So our server has restarted. 
I'm able to zoom here. I'm going to create a new request. And then I say this is going to be create a new book. So this is going to be a post request. You specify the body of that request. So it's going to be a JSON request. So a JSON body. So I create that. And I have to write the body, so I'm going to say title, and this is going to be, um, so we have, um, you can say, um, line, so the book is going to be in JavaScript, and the author of that book is going to be Let's say Jonathan said. So when we post this, we need to specify the URL. So in this case, we're writing a post request to localhost 5000 slash books. So if we send this, we get our book being created with an ID of three. So dead joint is equal to now. So if you want to get all books, we want to check out that book. We're having an error, our data is not being created. So we're going to fix that in a moment. So if I run, we get books being, we get our book that we've been created as this. And if we want to get that one book, we can access it still by saying, get a book with an ID of three. And this is what we get. Now to fix the date time error, we'll have to go and look into our code. So the issue is in the model, so we have Date time UTC now. So I have the time UTC now. So I have db dot date time db dot colon dot date time default is equal to date time dot UTC now. So let's see. So I'm having this error. Which I'm going to fix in a moment. Let me first work on this. So if I say um want to now update a book information, so the first thing we need to do is to get that book. So we can say get book to get book to update as book dot query dot get or four zero four. Then the ID we want to update. Now to get book to up, get book to update, you also need the data that comes from the, from the from the client in the form of JSON. So we need this data, and next thing will be to <coughs> update this object with the data that comes from the client. So I book to update dot. So the title, so the title is going to be so title is going to be equal to data dot get title and book to update dot author is going to be photo data dot get data dot get author now the next thing after updating we shall just have to set this in the sub database and db dot session Dot comment and what we're going to do is to also measure our response here. So I'm going to say match API dot measure with. So we need to measure with book model and create an envelope, an envelope of this is going to be book. We should also want to return a status code of 200. So I'm going to say 200. Same thing here, 200. And now uh, all we need is to return the book that we have updated. So we need to say return book to update the status code of 200. Now if I save, my server is going to restart. And all we need to do in this case is to come and create a new request. So this is going to be update. So this is going to be with put and 
body is going to be in JSON. Now when we say this, we want to get um, HTTP localhost localhost 5000 slash book slash one and we want to update it with info like um, the title is going to be equal to let's say cool wicked shell scripts and let's say that offer is going to be equal to this coin so let's send this and see so it's returning an error and the error is well now constraint failed for book dot author we made a mistake here so we need to fix that so if i fix that and send we're having our our book being updated now if i get that individual book we're going to see that it has been updated to cool we can't show scripts the next thing to do is to implement a delete route for API. Now, what we need to do is to come just right here and get that book to be deleted. So, we need to say book to book to delete is going to be put in book dot query dot get. So, we want to get a book or throw a 404 error. So we want to throw a 404 error in case we don't get this book. Now we want to delete this book, so we delete by saying session dot delete. So this is going to be deleted book to delete, and we're going to save to the database by saying db.session dot commit. Now we will want to return. The book we deleted, so we're going to say book to delete and want to return true and true. So we're going to match with this also. So we're going to say at API dot marshal with at API dot marshal with. So we're going to marshal the book model and the envelope we're going to use is envelope. Um, we're going to say envelope, so the envelope is going to be book, book deleted, so let's use book deleted, let's call it book deleted, and we can also say the code is going to be 200 after deleting. So when we save that and we go to our database, to our insomnia, for, we go to our insomnia, so we're going to say, um, what we need is to delete delete our book and what we're going to do is to send a delete request so we say create and we now need to specify that we send it to localhost slash book slash one so when we send this we're going to get the book deleted as this if you try to query that book so we say get all books if we send we're going to see that it has been deleted and all right our api has been created now the next thing that is important is to see the api documentation of this the api documentation is usually created by a tool called swagger ui and the beauty with flash quest x is it helps you document your api in the go now Let's go and try to set that up. So we're going to go to our API instance just within here, and then we have to specify um, have to specify doc as being equal to slash. Now what this does is to basically put our documentation of our API on the root route. So that when you go to the browser, we need to open up a new browser and a new tab and when i open up a new tab i'm going to go to localhost 5000 
and if we get this nice UI that shows us our API documentation. The beauty with this is we can be able to document our API in an easy way that is easy to use by front-end developers. So we can be able to say like um, get get or so we can be able to say like we need what we need here is to get all Oops. then we can also be able to say um, here we can be able to say we need to create a new, a new book and we can also be able to say next that here we're getting your book with an ID so we can say um, get 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 a book get a book by id so you can also be able to update a book so updating a book we can say update update a book then you can also come this side and say delete a book and so I think most of our, our routes are done so if I save that go back this side I'll be able to see default namespace and I have this explaining what the various routes do now the good thing is we can also be able to add fields to add parameters for example when we sending a put request we can be able to specify what we need to send in this. Um, we can be able to come and say that for that post, um, we can say we can add a decorator called at API dot doc. And what this does is to specify our documentation. So we can say that um, parameters. So we can say parameters equals to a dictionary. Now we can say that what we need title and this is going to be um just give it a description. So we can say a title and then we can say we need an author. So we can also describe this as an author. So when we save this and go back to our documentation if I refresh it I'll be able to go to post and we see that post has different parameters you have fields um, you have description so if you say try it out um, you'll be able to see that that is to work so um, wonder why it's not working let me consult the documentation I'm going to go to the first post X documentation and I'm going to go to show the documentation and uh, so I have docs params so it's supposed to be params not parameters so if I change this to params and it's going to reload if I go back to my API and refresh I am going to go to post, which is here, and we shall be able to see the different fields that you're supposed to fill. So if I say try it out, I'm going to fill this with um, book, and then say book. So when you send, I'm going to execute this, and so we have a problem here. Okay, hmm. so I'll have to use Stack Overflow for this video, <laughs> kind of thing. So I need to go and look for what happened. So if I say, show the blog post, not working. So um, this is with task.
search x um, okay so let's see um, using api doc mm -hmm. so we're going to find out what is wrong we should using json string meanwhile we can choose to skip that for now because all we needed was to display how we do the Swagger documentation, so I will save that. So meanwhile, all we see is uh, our API is currently working as expected. Meanwhile, if you feel like you want to contribute to solve this error, please, I'm going to leave that code, that link to this code in the comment section, in the, in the section down below, in the description, I'm going to leave that so it's good for this however we've been able to learn how to create and if I, the other thing i want to do is to also add a title to this so i may say title and this can be a book api and we may also say um, that we may need a description so the description may be a simple a simple list API for so this can be a simple list API for books. So if I save and go back beside, we're going to see the simple list API for books, the various routes we have, and what they do, and the model that we have, which is for books. Now, this model helps us to marshal or to serialize our book model. So We've been able to travel all the way to the finish of this video and I'd like to say that if you feel you have learned from this video, please drop a like on this video, share it with your friend, help a friend learn and thank you for watching.